Today I'm going to show you how I painted this carnation flower and I'm going to try to break it down into easy steps so that anyone can paint something like this if you want to. So let's just get right into the video. All of the supplies that I'm using will be listed down in the description below. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm focusing on the petals and I'm mixing up a very light version of yellow ochre. The petals aren't quite yellow, the undertones. They have a little bit of brown to them, so that's why I'm choosing yellow ochre instead of a yellow color. Now I am using my Holbein watercolors here, and these paints performed really well during this painting. I was really impressed. I'm using a few different techniques, so I went ahead and wet all of the petals here all together. You can see I'm focusing on the shadow areas in the petals, putting that yellow ochre color down. And then I just add a touch of the burnt sienna to a couple of darker areas. Now I'm going down to the stem and I'm mixing up two different greens. So I want a little bit more of a sap green and a little bit of a cooler green for the bottom part of the stem, just to have a little bit of variation in this stem. Now these I go ahead and put in wet on dry, so I'm just putting the paint right on top of the paper and I'm just doing a flat layer because I will come back and add some shadows in afterwards. But for this carnation, I really wanted to test these paints and see how they layered and performed with some of my techniques that I like to use. So then I need to mix up a red for the petals. Now, these petals have a really nice, warm, bright red, almost like a Windsor red. And I didn't have that color in this set, so I end up taking the vermilion hue, which is very orangey, and mixing that with the quinacridone red, which is a lot more pink. And that gave me that really nice, like, Windsor red. And I'm doing this wet on dry, and I'm just dropping this color in on the edges of the petals. And then I'm making little tiny marks, so I think I went down to a size 6 or a size 4 brush here. And I'm just lining the edges of the petals and then just creating little tiny lines coming from it. And then I'm taking my size 8 Princeton Neptune brush and I'm getting that wet and then I dab it off on a cloth so it's very, very dry. And then I just ever so slightly soften the edges of the petals where I'm creating those lines coming in where it's meeting the yellow ochre. And that's going to give us that look where the red is on the edge of the petals. Now I'm just focusing on one color here. So once we get started with this, the petals are gonna to start to look a little flat because we're just using the one red, but we will come in afterwards and mix up a little bit darker of a red color just to give some variation and to start giving those petals the look that they're curving and turning. Now, if this video is going a little bit too quick for you, I do have a Patreon where I post all of my tutorials in real time, and I will go ahead and link that down below. You get the line art, and I go very in-depth with my detailed explanation. I show you exactly what colors I'm using on my color swatches, and I'm able to explain a little bit more as I'm doing it. Now, one thing I wanna note for the back petals that are a little bit further in the back, I'm not worrying about getting as much detail into those. I want some of those to sort of fade off into the distance. The focus is gonna be on the main petals that are up front, those nice, big, large petals. There's about four or five of them that I'm really focusing on. And then those softer petals, I'm even gonna let the color be a little bit less vibrant back there, so it sort of pushes those petals back a little bit more. And that's gonna help the focus be more on those main petals and our stem of the flower. So now I'm going in and just mixing up a little bit darker version of both of those greens and I just mix a little bit of red into it and a little bit more sap green. I love mixing red into my greens because it just makes them really dark and earthy. And I want to create a little bit of a shadow coming underneath of the petals. So I'm taking that tone and I'm doing wet on dry again, but for some of these shadows I want them to be very stark so I want a harsh line under that petal but then some of the shadows that are on the little stems sticking out, I am taking that Princeton Neptune brush and softening out some of those areas. And then I just add a little bit more sap green and a little bit more red and create just an even darker version of that green just for the very darkest parts. I like to try to use the same colors that I've used in a painting just for some cohesiveness. And then for the darker blue-green, again, I add more Viridian, and then I think I add a little bit touch of the Quinn Red to that as well, and that gives me my darker value there. 
And now here I'm mixing up a little bit of a darker version of the red and I end up using some quinacridone red and I take a little bit of mineral violet into that um, because purple will darken red up naturally. If you had something like neutral tint, you could always use that as well. I love using neutral tint in with my reds because it leans just a little bit more on the purple side. And I'm not taking this color everywhere that I took the bright red color. I'm looking at where those folds are in the petals and where the little jagged edges are and I'm trying to find those darker areas and I'm focusing this color in there and then if I need to use that Princeton brush to soften out any edges again I will do that. I absolutely love my Princeton brush for this. Now I do rave about my silver black velvet brushes all the time. They are hands down my favorite but there is something about that Princeton Neptune brush that just does a really great job at softening edges, especially when doing wet on dry. Now I'm going in and just mixing up an even more darker using that Quin Red, the Mineral Violet, and I think I added a touch of the Ivory Black just because I didn't have a neutral tint here. And that's just for that bottom petal where it's gonna be the darkest. And now I'm going in and getting a little bit more of that yellow ochre and I'm getting this more concentrated and I really want to focus on the shadow areas on the petals. So to create realistic paintings, we need to have good contrast in our paintings. So we want to focus on having very light areas, but we also want to focus on having very dark areas. So that's what I'm starting to get in here. I'm starting to get some of those darker shadow areas in. And I'm looking at how some of these petals curve too. So a lot of the petals that curve upwards, the shadow is down towards the base of them. And the petals that come out towards us in the front, the shadow is again towards the base, like in the middle of the flower, if that makes sense. So I'm just looking where those shadows are. And then as I need to darken it, I end up using a little bit of burnt umber, but it was a little bit too brown. So I went ahead and added some more red and I don't remember if I used the quinacridone red or the vermilion hue red. I may have added a bit of both to that um, but that gave me a little bit more of like a reddy brown and I found that worked a little bit better for those darkest areas in the petals. And you can see once we're starting to get some of these dark contrast shadows in it really makes those petals pop and come forward. Now, I ended up going a little bit too dark on the right-hand side of some of these petals, so I'm taking out my trusty scrubber brush, and I love this brush. It works really well, especially on good paper like arches, usually any cotton paper that can handle a little bit of scrubbing. So I'm just taking this and lifting out those light areas that I got a little bit too dark, and then if I end up getting any of the red areas out, I can just go back and put those in, but I love using this when I end up just being a little too heavy handed with some of my dark colors and you can see it made a difference and brought back some of those light areas. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to subscribe and check out this video here for more watercolor tips. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.